Hi and welcome back to Let's Talk About It. If you've been here before, my name's Lee. Um, so today I want to talk about the news overnight um, that Russia um, have made a statement. Uh, this was reported by Reuters that they are going to move their gas sales to rubles only. Uh, that means that anybody buying gas from Russia needs to pay in rubles. Now, this is really big. And if we look at um, the sanctions that the US, Europe and a couple of other countries put, the aim of those sanctions were to devalue the ruble, create high inflation within Russia, with the ultimate aim of destabilizing the Russian economy and um, you know, creating a situation in Russia where the people get dissatisfied with the Putin government and overthrow that government. Well, this is clearly not happened or happening. And we see now that Russia's economy although there are bumps in the road, is starting to cope um, with this. And we also see now Russia, this is pretty much this, this um, decision to price gas in rubles only is the first of the real counter sanctions against what Russia calls unfriendly countries. As you're probably aware from the news, Biden is on his way to Europe and on Thursday he's going to meet with his European G7 um, counterparts and I think they're going to discuss more sanctions that they can put on Europe. It's obvious that now Europe and the US are seeing these sanctions are not, are not working in the manner they would have hoped and I'm sure they will be um, thinking up more sanctions that they can levy on Russia. But the problem here is that Europe is very, very dependent on Russian gas. Currently, Russia supply about 40% of Europeans' gas. Now, we hear the EU, certain leaders in the EU saying that, oh, they're, they're going to, um, you know, um, cut massively Russian gas use over the next 12 months. But if you listen to various experts and engineers in the field, that is just not possible. It's more wishful thinking than something that can be practically done. Um, to utilize LNG gas from the US or from Qatar, um, there's a massive amount of infrastructure needs to be built. And as far as I'm aware, US is already at capacity shipping as much LNG to Europe as they possibly can can so it's it's really not not easy and we saw the german energy minister a few days ago visit qatar and he come back saying that um you know they've they've made agreements for long term but that there's nothing i think from what i've read it's all talk there's there's no contracts put in place basically qatar says yes we are willing to sell you more lng gas however um you know that needs to be worked out by the companies involved and also Qatar have suggested that it will take them up to 2025 um, to produce um, double the amount of LNG um, they are producing now. So there's really no short term solution for Europe sourcing gas other than from Russia. So how are Europe going to deal with this? Well, the bottom line is they need to um, buy rubles and this is there's, there's four ways they can do this so the first one is they can exchange gold for rubles with russia secondly they can sell goods to russia third they can exchange euros for rubles on the forex market and fourth they can buy rubles from russia's central bank with euro or usd now there's issues possibly with all of these uh, the first one is not a big issue they they could um, exchange gold for rubles the second option selling goods to russia well they can't do that because they've it, they've put all these sanctions on about selling goods to russia that's pretty much out of the question they can exchange euros for rubles on the forex market now 
yes, they can do that. However, this will push up the value of the ruble. Um, and we already saw the ruble um, rise by about five or six percent yesterday against the euro on the on, on this news from Russia. And if you look, that was exactly the thing that the sanctions were meant to prevent. The sanctions were meant to prevent the collapse of the ruble. So they'll be very reluctant to want to do that. And fourthly, they could buy rubles from Russia's central bank. Um, but the issue here is that Russia may not want to accept euros or dollars in exchange for rubles into its central bank. So what the uh, euro would have to do, it would then have to change its euros into an intermediate currency and then change them into rubles. Now, one of those intermediate currencies could possibly be the Chinese Yuan. However, and I think this is why uh, America announced that they, they will um, sanction um, China if they help um, Russia. So if, let's say, for argument's sake, Germany buy $50 uh, million dollars worth of Chinese Yuan, and then with that Chinese Yuan, they change it at the Russian central bank into rubles to pay for the gas. America might then deem that China are helping uh, Russia overcome sanctions and sanction China. Now, yesterday um, on this news, we saw natural gas increase quite significantly on the market. We saw the ruble value increase. And we also saw a big jump in oil prices. Now, as I make this video, oil is up to uh, $119 a barrel. So it's trading significantly higher. This um, is obviously going to um, you know, filter through to, to European and UK markets. Now, take, for instance, the UK. We already saw that prices have risen from £1.48 a litre for diesel in January of this year to currently over £1.75 a litre now. And if this oil price continues to, to remain high, that is likely to increase further. Now, I noticed the uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak, yesterday um, thought they were doing a massive um, favour to UK citizens by knocking five pence off a litre of fuel at the pump. But realistically, all that does is reduces the price of a gal uh, sorry, a litre of diesel to what it was a week ago. So really, that's that's going to have little effect, if if any, because next week it's it's likely that diesel will be higher still. So. We're going to see um, higher prices across Europe for energy. And I think this is um, part of the US's plan. It's not just to um, split Europe from Russia, but I think part of the plan here is to also split Europe from Asia and bring Europe back into the sphere of influence of the USA. And I think now the European Union have a big decision to make whether they um, carve their own um, path and start dealing more with um, Asia or whether they succumb to the pressure from the US and move more unto, under the US's sphere of influence. And I think if, if they do the latter, which is move more under the US's influence, they're going to see prices and instability in Europe as those prices rise from citizens. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the matter. Let me know what you think down in the comments. But as always, for now, take care.